This is Twit. Let's go to New Zealand for our brown liquor pick of the week. And it's only a few distilleries in New Zealand, although the number is beginning to grow. Uh, and this is one of them. This is the Cardrona, their particular edition called the Full Flight Solera. Great name. Uh, so the Cardrona Valley is way down the South Island. Right now I'm sort of mid North Island. I'm in the Northeast corner near Tonga. Um, Cardrona is down uh, deep in the South Island, up in the Canterbury Plains, which is uh, near Queenstown. You'd fly into Queenstown and then you'd drive a little north up into the Highlands, uh, close to the uh, Wakana Lake. Uh, there is the, the distillery there. Um, they, the lady behind this thing, is a, her name is Desiree Reed. She had been in, she'd been in whiskey for a couple of decades. This particular facility was only set up in 2015. They are buying their barley in the Canterbury Plains, so it is New Zealand barley uh, sprouted and milled right there on site. They have their own grinding tools. They're, they do a long ferment with classic brewer's yeast, so 70 hours. It's a very long time to do fermentation. Their stills are, as they call them, unusually small. <laughs> uh, and, they, and they're small enough, they're named. So their low wine still is only 2,000 liters, and it's named Roaring Meg. Um, <laughs> Because they, you know, those uh, low wine stills, the initial ones are noisier. They're doing their first separations off of the wash and stuff. So it can be a bit rackety. And then Gentle Annie is the high uh, still that takes it up into the uh, high 70s percent. And it's a 1200 liter still. They also make some gins and things. So there's several other stills they have there, but they're column stills. So we won't talk about this. We only care about the pot still. And they have several other additions. Uh, this particular one, I think, is their best, the Full Flight Solera. It has spent seven years in bourbon and sherry casks. I'm pretty sure at least six of those were just American bourbon casks. You tend to finish in Oloroso sherry. You don't want to spend too much time there. Uh, and it's bottled at cast strength, 62.8%. Is this so it? That's, the uh, Full Flight know. Bourbon? Or is that this it? Or is, no, this that's is not it. Architecturally, this is closer to a Scottish whiskey, except for that part where it's not made in Scotland. Right. What about the peatiness, though? Uh, no peat at all. Yeah, that's not a thing here. You know, they've got plenty of wood to do their drying. So, yeah, it is very much a, uh, a you could, you. I would put this in there around the Abelur, Abenanth, yeah. except oh, that it's very cool. young. It's only a seven year. It has no age appellation at all because it's just not old enough. And does that make it, is that more bitter or? Is that uh, it, it tends to be a little harsher, a little more heady in the alcohol side, not that sort of deep richness you get from having more time. It's quite cool down in the Canterbury Plain too. So like they're getting more Scottish kind of conditions there. Uh, it doesn't get as cold, that cold in the winter, but it does get pretty cold. Uh, but they haven't been around long enough to really make an older whiskey. So this is only a seven-year-old. And that's just not that much time for what they're commanding. Let's call it a boutique whiskey. That's the kind uh, phrase for it. 175 New Zealand dollars. That's about 100 US. And, you know, when you think about what you can buy for 100 US, like that'll land you a Dalmore 12. Yeah. You no, know, she's less. But, you, know, you know, change it's, less. It's kind of fun that you can travel with your whiskey, you know? I mean, that's kind of neat. It, it well, has in a these story. different parts of the world are all experimenting, right? Yeah, and yeah. Also, they, you can travel to your whiskey, <laughs> as Richard does. No, seriously, you can go bring the whiskey and, 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 no, and visit these. That. Those are fun trips. Yeah, I mean, yeah. of course, yeah. But uh, I, you, know? you know, and I did go past Pukino on the way down, which is the the uh, Kiwi whiskey I talked about last time I was here back in September. Hmm. So uh, it's um, there's only a, I, it's like if I'm going to, this beca is becoming a shtick now. Next week I'm going to be in Sydney. So I'm just going to have to find right. an Australian whiskey, preferably have one in hand. I didn't have time to grab this one because uh, I was racing to, to make the tail end of the show. But otherwise I would have grabbed one. No one but, minds uh, if you're not, if you're not holding it in your hand, we believe you. Yeah. <laughs> but I do like the days when I can hold yeah, up the bottle cool. to taste yeah. it in front of you. Like yeah. those are good days, right? Yeah. But uh, uh, that's not one of these days. But, you know, here I am in New Zealand. And yes, there is New Zealand whiskey. It is made very much of the Scottish style. This is, in many ways, approached like a space side. It just hasn't had the years. So it comes out a little younger, a little different style. Uh, but otherwise, they sort of matched their, their approach. Pure barley, good water, simple aging, uh, and used barrels because the Scots are cheap. <laughs> By the nice. I'm impressed they got Oloroso down here. That's a long way to bring a barrel, and those barrels are big. 
right? Those are the big six, seven, eight hundred liter barrels. Like it's wow. not easy to ship a That's sherry cool. cask. Where, where the Americans, they're two hundreds, they're little, so they're much easier to move around, and they're plentiful because Americans will only use them once. Right. Richard Campbell, runasradio.com. That's where you'll find his podcasts, that and .NET Rocks. Uh, and he joins us every week, even if he has to drive 1,000 miles and drive another 1,000 more. <laughs> <laughs>